so it's a good way for us to decide how to implement things. Okay, let's start. Um, hi, everybody. How many of you have actually seen the navigation already working? Ooh, is it going to be the first time for a lot of you seeing it? No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, well, first, hi, I'm Cristina. Uh, you can find me as Secrina on Drupal.org. I'm a Drupal Core Frontend Framework Manager and UX Maintainer. And I am also a, front a senior frontend developer at Lulabot. And um, I started this project, we, with several people, started this project a while back. Um, Prolic was about na last DrupalCon in North America. And um, I was super lucky uh, to be a sponsor for half a year to work full time on um, Drupal contribution. And the navigation was one of the main things that uh, we worked on. And after that, we had a lot of uh, people, uh, not just from Lulabot because we have some sponsor time, but also uh, other people from the community. At the beginning, we had people from OneX Internet, people from Akia. So it's uh, been great to work with other teams. And um, yeah, we have a lot of people uh, out there from the community jumping in and helping. So. It's been great so far, and here's the navigation. Um, basically, we are uh, in core already uh, since just a few days ago. Um, basically, it was a Friday night at uh, midnight when we actually get into core, so there's a story behind that. But yeah, we made it into core as an experimental module. Uh, first, it was as alpha, and then we, go and we got all the specific signals and other reviews of the roadmap and um, we're now at a better release and uh, this is what uh, the navigation mainly is. It's basically a left uh, sidebar that basically um, can be expanded and collapsed. Uh, it has uh, the option to have as many uh, menus as you want in the left and it opens on a dashboard, uh, uh, sorry, on a drawer, uh, kind of drawer and you can actually have um, submenu items and, and so on. So uh, why actually we started that? Um, the idea was actually to empower uh, site builders, especially to build the right solution or the best solution. Um, Basically, it's not as simple as saying, we're going to provide this thing for you. We want to actually help you uh, defining and uh, installing the best thing for you on your site. But um, let's see some background of how we actually get there. Some of the previous work, uh, probably the longer one, is the information architecture issue. Uh, there's been, uh, I think it's, has like almost 10 years old. And the idea of that issue is basically uh, rearrange the items uh, that we have on the admin menu uh, to order them in a way that make more sense, especially for people that is not used to Drupal. Um, so that's an ongoing process, uh, but it's out of a scope uh, from the navigation itself, otherwise we wouldn't be here today. Then we have the content creation or content management menu the content menu, we call it. Uh, it's a new menu. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but it actually happened a while before we uh, started talking about creating the new uh, navigation per se as an initiative. Also something that was a foundation for this work was all the research and all the designs and prototypes that we created during the admin UI and JavaScript modernization initiative that died a while back. Uh, but one of the great things uh, was um, being able to change the admin interface, but we weren't able to do all the things. Uh, we weren't able to achieve all the things that we actually wanted to achieve. And one of these big changes was actually changing the layout itself of the admin interface. Sasha, who, was one of the man who is one of the maintainers of Claro, uh, actually was able to get a lot of these ideas and put them into Gene. And what you can see in Jin is partially a lot of the things that we discussed for Claro. And obviously he made a lot of improvements on top of that because he's been able to uh, make a lot of changes that we weren't able to do that uh, for Core. But one of the first things, which is the navigation, we're finally, we've been able finally to implement. So why do we want to uh, have this new navigation in Core? Um, I mean, we would probably have a, a long list, but uh, probably the most important one will be that we, differ we want different information architecture for site builders or content users, for example. 
in core, uh, if you obviously, as almost everybody, installed the admin um, toolbar, you won't have this problem, but with, with core directly, you didn't have uh, um, a second level uh, item if you were, unless you were on uh, the horizontal, sorry, the, on the horizontal mode, you didn't have, and on the vertical one, you do, but um, basically it was really limited. Uh, you also had too much vertical space, the design wasn't up to date. Uh, nowadays, uh, it was great at the time, but it had a lot of years. Uh, it had also accessibility problems and it was built on top of jQuery. So if we focus, if we put the focus on the navigation itself, that would be more or less uh, a timeline and also a group of areas that we've been working on. As you can see, the information architecture is in there, on top of there and all the time has been there, and we've reminded about that all the time. The other day we had an issue, we, we have an issue for like having four level deep elements on the sidebar, and there was somebody that came, yeah, but that's not okay to have that on a, on a sidebar. We shouldn't have that. We need to change the information architecture, and it was like, yeah, I know, but we first need to fix a few things on the admin toolbar. I mean, toolbar, toolbar, navigation, you will hear me like saying different names. It's been called in a different ways. So basically the information architecture, yes, we are aware that this needs to be changed. This is out of a scope of the navigation because otherwise, as I was saying before, we wouldn't be here. So uh, we started some research uh, uh, a while back. Um, that research informed a lot of the designs that we actually uh, created. And then we started prototyping them to actually test all these things. And with the user test, we were able to iterate on the, design, and on the designs again, and all this cycle. And as you can see, all of these areas overlap at some point. We still want to do more user tests. We are right now in core, but all of these things, uh, designs are actually still being improved because of the accessibility feedback that we've been receiving. So it means that uh, we are in constant um, iteration to make uh, a better product. So, yeah, more or less, this is the idea. If we go into the research, uh, for those that have been on the, on the dashboard uh, presentation that we had before, a lot of this uh, research was shared, and from this, uh, a lot of the ideas to change the administration interface came from. Uh, but uh, for the navigation and the admin interface especially, we defined uh, three personas. Um, one is the site administrator, the other the site builder, and the other the content uh, users. It's important that they are separated um, content users um, on the navigation itself. It's not as important to separate the, the, the editors from the managers, the content manager from the content authors. Uh, on the dashboard it is, but not in the navigation. But it's important to separate site builders from site administrators, for example. For a site administrator, you're main goals or the information that you want to have is probably not the same as you want from the, for a site builder. A site builder probably just wants to go and start creating stuff, creating content types, uh, getting, adding new fields. For a site administrator, is something else. But all of them need the navigation to do anything. And some of, our, some of the other research that we did was uh, uh, we defined several user journey, basically for those that you know, well, it's, it is that. Uh, journey. It, you want to achieve a task and it's the journey that you take to get there. It, if it has too many tasks uh, or too many steps, it means that it's not useful or it takes too much time. So that's something that's a clear uh, example of something that needs to be improved. Uh, for example, a journey will be you log in and then you get redirected to the Drupal, um, to your uh, user account and then you want to start doing something, then you have to find a way to start creating content and go through the navigation and do that. So, for example, a site builder would be you log in, you go to the user page, that's why there is a dashboard initiative. You go to the user page, uh, then you go to the, whatever is the, the place, you go to structure, then you go to create the content. All of these steps are going through the navigation, so the navigation needs to uh, have an important, really important role to make it better. Uh, this is the um, 
issue that I was talking about. Uh, uh, it says restructure the admin interface. I know it looks like it's going to change the whole thing. It's basically for the information architecture that this is, uh, has been sitting there for a long time and there's been a lot of people commenting, but it's because it's a huge change, uh, it's going to take time. But um, the other one that I was seeing is this new content uh, creation or content management uh, menu. And uh, the idea behind that is that we basically, if you log in as an editor and you don't have permissions, what you will, will end up is with a toolbar at the top with a manage, with some, with some stuff on the manage, and then some random items at the top that only have one child. So basically the idea from that is taking all these items and putting them and grouping them together. And this way you have an information architecture or a menu that makes sense for a content user compared to the one that would have a site administrator or a site builder that would be the admin uh, menu, for example. So how we actually started the navigation itself? As I was saying, uh, we created a prototype. Actually, it was basically an HTML prototype put in a tweak template and we enabled uh, inside a module and we enabled that. And that's how we started. And this way we started uh, doing all the user tests. After that, we, in generic terms, we basically integrated it with real menus, with a menu system. And when we validated all these things, then is when we actually started implementing the, the new features and the new designs. That's a high level overview. But on the, on the test and the research side, this would be how it looks like. Um, I, as you can see, we did a lot of user tests, but also we did other uh, kind of research. It's really important because these user tests basically change and shape completely how the navigation is. What the idea that we had at the beginning has nothing to do well, so to what we actually have nowadays. First, on the first, round te uh, on the first round, we validated the idea of having a vertical left sidebar. We did some research before that, uh, but still we wanted to validate it. Um, we validated that the content menu was something that was useful for every user. And for our surprise, it wasn't just useful for content users, site builders and site administrators were okay by having a content menu placed in there. It was annoying for them. They prefer to have and see the menu that the content users can see and still have the navigation below because we had enough space for that. So that was also surprising for us. Something that came on the first uh, round of tests that you will see why I'm smiling right now is the drop tones or split buttons. They were really confusing for users. Even the users that they knew that uh, you have an arrow on the right, the arrow opens as a menu, the, the text is a link. Whatever we do, even on a visual on a visual level, it was confusing for users. So um, we did some research, and actually, mo well, almost none of the navigations that actually you can find out there, they don't have a link and a, a, a split button, basically, because it confuses. It's not a pattern that is a standard or not really used. We validated also that the dashboard were use was useful for um, basically every user. And something else that was validated in here that it's not exactly related to the navigation itself, but it was really useful, uh, especially for users to make them more comfortable uh, on the space that they are so they understand where, where they are. Uh, right now we have the title um, that is generated uh, based on the local navigation. For example, if you go to a content type and you go to edit fields or you go to manage display, the title that you have in there is manage display. Do you know if you are in the article? Do you know if you are on the news art, uh, content type on the page? Which content type you are? You only know that because you have the breadcrumb. So those are some of all, all the other changes that we see that were uh, going to be useful. After that, we did this uh, card sorting that actually proved the need for a content uh, focused part of the navigation. But we also discovered that there are so many Drupalisms that are confusing people that uh, we actually open an issue and there is a group of uh, UX enthusiasts and UX experts, some of them are experts and it's actually their job uh, working on that. So that's the issue. Uh, if you want to know any more information and um, the issue number over there and there, um, there's uh, work happening. 
Uh, the card sorting, actually, what we, I showed is this is a matrix of uh, the, the cards and the correlation that each card had with each other. And as you can see, there are a few of them that like ha are darker spots and they are grouped like kind of together. What this showed is that the, user that's have, ha the users that have experience with Drupal put, uh, for example, all the structure uh, items grouped together. With that, we saw that all the content elements are grouped together for everybody. And it's both management content, uh, managing content and creating content. So that was uh, also a really good way to see that uh, grouping and putting all uh, together all the content related tasks was important. On the second round of user uh, usability tests, we actually uh, paired with the University of Minnesota and we tested other things beyond the navigation like the project browser. Uh, we also came up with several ideas for UX and design improvements, but the most important part that we took from there is that we needed a strategy for change management. And basically users said, yeah, I like the new navigation, it looks cool, but I'm not going to change. It was like, but why? And everybody said, I need a reason for that. I want to invest the time to learn something new unless I have a reason for. So that's that was like a mind-blowing and open, uh, it really was an, uh, uh, an eye-opener, and we actually followed that lead. And we um, created this survey. Uh, so we had agencies from uh, Europe and America, small agencies and big agencies, and we basically asked uh, to people to um, let us know which customizations they were doing to the toolbar and how they were doing them. Basically from this survey, uh, we were able to uh, determine, uh, decide or, or see that the customizations were already happening. Uh, but it, were, it was really complicated to customize the, the navigation while the toolbar itself. So basically there was this desire to make it way easier. And also it was really uh, something that was brought up that people really wanted to have a completely different menu or a specific menu for the content users. So it looked like we, went on, we were on the right road. The third round of tests was basically validating the mobiles that we had at that point, but we completely changed them later. Because on the round four, basically, while well, we tested several things, we had this top bar that I'm going to show you later because we moved everything to the right. We had the top space that we could use for other things. And we basically put some things that were really confusing for, uh, for users. We moved the, the local task, this edit, translate, delete task that you also have on the front end. We moved them on the top bar. So this way they don't interfere with the front end theme. And it was really useful, but the problem is that some users say, I want my edit button like right there, like edit link or like preview link. So um, this is something that we will have to change. But the most important part that came here is that people were saying, where's my first level link? I want that, I'm used to that, but you don't have anything in there. I mean, man, you go to, you, you want to see to the, what's on the structure page and you just see the items that are below that. You already have that on the navigation, but people are used to that. And there is a situation where people can actually want that because it's a completely different um, page. So we needed to change the designs. And um, we basically came up with this new design that was actually a drawer. Um, I went to, I went to, um, some time off, like two weeks, and I came back and the design was completely different and we had three weeks to get that into core. So it was like, cool. <laughs> so yeah, we implemented the drawer. We even uh, got time uh, to do some user tests. Hey, there were my weekends. So uh, we tested the pattern uh, to, and uh, it was, clear that uh, users really liked it, it was easy to understand, and on the mobile navigation, we actually came up with, a, we didn't come up with that, we implemented something that exists out there, which basically is you go deep into each level. Um, and uh, w one of my hypothesis, hypothesis was that it was going to be a problem, and with the five users that we tested that, it didn't look like that, but more, more uh, testing is coming. So, uh, this change management that I was talking about uh, 
to give people a, a reason to actually to switch to the new uh, navigation, uh, we came up with this initial plan. So uh, people like to put their logo there, so they were able, uh, we put the, the Drupal logo in there. You can actually change the logo, you can hide the logo, you can do whatever you want. So that's something that is already built in. But more important, you are able to customize the existing me menus and actually to add new menus if you want to add a marketing side with um, documentation, um, a marketing menu, sorry, with documentation, branding guidelines, whatever. If you want to hide things, if you want to create things, you can just do that, there are menus. Basically, the way that we did that is reusing something that exists. Basically, we said we're just going to use menus. That's it. But um, why don't we put menus right in there and that's it? No, that's not that easy. What if there is some, this is Drupal, people just have a lot of ideas and they want to do things. What if they want to put something in the navigation that is not a menu? We have something in there which are blocks and you can actually do that not through the UI. If you want to go that far, the design and the integration is your problem, not our. <laughs> but you can do that. Uh, actually, there is a design for the Umami message that is not a menu, it's actually something that you can have in there and it has uh, an icon when it collapses and so we've taken care of our responsibility, you take care of the rest. <laughs> and we came up with this idea of, wait, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and I'm sorry for the two people here that implemented this amazing and really cool way of, um, basically you have the layout, block layout, we have that working, and we said, uh, we're not going to go far, we, let's just take something that is in Drupal that is easy, that's, that is working, and let's just uh, reuse it. The thing is that the block layout, layout works with the theme, and the theme, uh, like it's, it's more complicated, you can actually reuse the way it is, so we, we had to make adjustments and because we weren't in core, we basically duplicated uh, the content, the, the code and well, basically uh, we created a plugin system and a config entity for navigation blocks and um, we created this uh, UI that, that basically it's a clone of uh, the block layout. The problem is that we basically duplicated the code. And here's two weeks from 10.3 being released. We open the merge request and the framework managers come and see the code for the first time and they were like, huh, wow, you have like 4,000 lines of code here duplicated from core. And we're like, yeah, yeah, but it's like, yeah, we, we, we want what is in there, but it's not exactly the same. So, and they were like, okay, let's change what it's in core to include your functionality. But the problem is that it was so complicated that, well, they, saw, they thought that it um, would be a little bit problematic. And then this Friday, uh, the, the week before, um, so there's one week to actually the deadline for uh, getting something merged for 10.3, and it's Friday. <laughs> and then you have, Kaj and Larolan Ali are uh, just talking about how we can change that and suddenly there's this change on the merge request. Lee stayed the whole Saturday working on that and he said, okay, we're going to make you change that, but we're going to build for you this first part, which was great, but you leave on Friday and you have one module and you come on Monday <laughs> and you have another one. So basically it was great. So now we are not using block layout, we are using layout builder. And the thing is, well, it's great because there are 4,000 lines of code that we don't have to maintain anymore. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of people that says, but I don't want layout builder installed on my side. Well, not sure if you've been to the Dries node and to some other things. <laughs> layout builder is not going away. And actually, if you enable uh, the navigation, Leo Builder is a dependency, but you don't have to use Leo Builder anywhere. So it's going to be there. So it's, uh, you don't have to enable Leo Builder for any content. You, you won't see that. So it's not a big problem. And to be true, to, to be said, 
um, a lot of UIs are going to use more and more that, like not just the dashboard initiative that you mentioned, you heard, uh, it's way easier to have something that is draggable that uh, on this way, right on the region that you want to have the, the things compared to the block layout. So it's a one step forward. Obviously, Leo Builder needs to have a lot of things improved that is going to happen in the next months. So don't worry about that. Well, help if you want, if you worry about. Okay, on the design side, um, basically we came up with uh, a design system uh, that uh, modernized the thing. It was uh, working together uh, with a lighter uh, schema that we have for Claro, but it's a new design system. I would say, but come on, another one? Yes. Uh, basically, uh, our idea is to improve what we have in core right now. And uh, this means uh, that we need some really modern things. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later, like tokens and some other things. Uh, but basically, what is more important about that is that we're not just going to change the styles. Well, I was, if the core, the Claro maintainer was listening to me, will kill me, but it's me. So, yeah, basically, uh, with uh, Claro, we did a lot of changes, but we couldn't finish all the things that we wanted to change. And those things are big layout changes. We don't want to have just a page. We want to change a lot of things in there. Uh, by moving the navigation to the, to the left, uh, you can have the top bar, uh, the top region um, empty to put stuff in there. And if you have this top region, you can use this top region to open and close things like Jin, for example, is doing. But it's not just that. You can have a lot of other parts of the interface that you can actually reuse. There is a meta issue for that. Obviously, there is always an issue for that in Drupal. But this is what we are actually um, shipping right now with uh, the navigation. We have this uh, experimental module inside an experimental module which is the top bar. Uh, right now, the only thing that it has is the actions. Basically, it takes the local actions to the top bar. There is a meta issue uh, that has a plan and some initial designs of the things that are going to be moved there. But the more important thing here is that on the left, we have what is the site navigation. You're navigating through the site. It's site-wide. If you are on the top, on the top bar, you have things that are contextual to the page itself. But I'm going to go to that later. You can actually change things like moving the, the right, right sidebar, uh, put it like collapsible, like Jean has, for example. But it's not just that. It's also changing uh, the layers, how the layers are grouped. Um, we want to do a lot of changes on the design itself. So that's why I was saying it's not just um, changing colors, it's changing density, for example. You should be able to change the density of your uh, lists, like Jean, for example, has the padding between the tables so you can have more or less content, or like other small things, basically having a look what is a modern um, design system. Other changes that we are um, thinking about uh, on the navigation are like local tasks, the co local actions can actually go into the, the top bar, uh, the vertical tabs. We would love to have a search uh, integrated, but we also already have the search filters on the uh, module page. We can want to change a lot of things to make the navigation through the admin interface better. So this is the, the local tasks uh, that we would like to change. The CTAs put them on the top bar, for example. But what about also local actions? We would love to be able to, uh, what if in here uh, you just click on the view mode, a uh, model opens to you, and you don't have to go to the other section of the Drupal site and go back and then change anything on the, on the, view, mo on the view mode. We are thinking about how we can make these user journeys that we were talking at the beginning way easier for content user, for site builders, and from, for site administrators. So this is some overview of what other things are coming. On the design system itself, um, 
I think the tokens here are going to be a big key for this, uh, not just uh, if you're thinking about single directory components and how we can reuse that, but also in the system itself. So we came up with this uh, strategy where we're defining color blue 100. Wow, that's so smart. I'm sure non, nobody will actually use this exact naming for the front end theme. No conflicts at all. So basically we came up with this admin toolbar, admin toolbar prefix, um, but what if you actually want to change the whole admin um, system itself? So we were basically defining the value, the default value on the right, then we are defining this Drupal admin UI, color blue 100, so if Jean want to define their color blue 100, it might be used not only on the toolbar, but also somewhere else. And I'm saying Jean, I'm saying any other element from the admin UI, like the experience builder, for example, could use these design tokens. And then we maybe are defining the ones for the navigation, but if you use the prefix for, the ad, for Drupal admin, anything that is on the Drupal admin will work together with the same colors. So that's the strategy that we are following. We are also defining primary tokens, which would be like colors, uh, sizes, uh, padding, spacing. Then we have uh, an, on la a layer on top of that that would be semantic tokens. That's the key to actually be able to easily customize the colors and the spacing and all these things. And if you want to have a palette that it has another accent color but also a different color for icons, that's the thing that you're going to use. This is the layer of tokens that you're going to replace. And we also will have component tokens for each of the, to uh, each of the components that we are, all we, uh, we are also going to have, which actually we, I hope we are going to have single directory components soon used on the, yeah, on the navigation. This is something that it's uh, an issue on Drupal core for actually uh, create this file where you would be able to uh, use, uh, define a palette on the design, uh, sorry, on the YAML configuration, and then you will be able to switch that on the UI. Front end improvements. Uh, basically, the thing that I'm more proud of, and I almost didn't write a line of code, but it was like really cool, is that we don't have any jQuery at all, which is really cool. We have also modern CSS, not just CSS variables. You basically, if you want to use this uh, with Internet Explorer 11, sorry. And as I was saying, we are planning to move everything to single directory components. My idea was trying to do that after DrupalCon uh, to get everybody focused on things, but here I have Mateo that he's pushing me to do that during DrupalCon. So if anybody wants to work on single directory companies, learn learn how single directory components work and help with the navigation, come to look for us. On the front end side, this drawer that you are seeing, uh, how you usually have a submenu or a lot of places, what the, 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 how the menu usually works is that you implement a delay because if you want to go to the bottom thing that is triggering the menu, you have to cross and get out of the, the target zone, the target area. And unless you go fast, you just basically lose the, the thing. Uh, that was making the navigation really slow. Like, it didn't react, it was like not fast enough. And then Lauri came up with, uh, found out this, and this is actually a strategy that has been used for ages. Like uh, Amazon was using that like a while back. But it's a, a, a standard pattern that a lot of people use, so we've implemented that in, in Drupal, and um, um, it's really cool. Uh, there are a few issues that uh, are going to actually finish that up, but that's a really good strategy, and it makes uh, the navigation way smoother. We also have an accessibility um, yeah, meta issue. Uh, those are the rules that we're looking for. So if in the room there is somebody that wants to test uh, the navigation, we have an environment to test that. We have um, uh, the steps that you have to, uh, to test for everything, everything that has been tested already. So if you are an expert or uh, somebody that likes accessibility, we would love to have you helping out testing the accessibility itself. 
Then something else that is uh, really, I think it's really cool for the navigation is the icons. Um, we have an issue, there is always an issue for something. We have an issue uh, to actually decide what is going to be the strategy for the icons. Because the first thing that people ask is, oh, will I have a drop down to choose my icon? It's like, well, we can't ship a library of like 1,000 icons on Drupal core. So uh, basically, we're going to ship with the uh, icons that we have by default, but we are trying to define a way um, to have um, icons uh, defined on configuration. So you can actually define them on a country, or you can actually define them on your custom module, ship that on a commit, and done. And, um, but we also think that it would be really cool to have a drop down and let everybody choose their own icon. Let's be realistic, we all would love that. So um, basically, uh, it would be great if somebody comes up with an idea for a country module and helps, we will do our best to integrate that. Uh, we also discussed uh, how to try to integrate uh, the search that the admin toolbar is providing. Uh, we discussed this a few uh, months back. We haven't uh, sit again with the maintainers of the admin toolbar, but it was a really good conversation a way back. And uh, what we actually are going to work uh, on the next uh, weeks is this top bar. And uh, we need to find a way, an easy way for to let country modules and people integrate their own things on the top bar because it's the thing that is going to make bigger improvements on the experience that people has with Drupal. So that's one of the big things. And yeah, to finish, this is the, the top bar. This is the new thing. As I was saying, this is what we have uh, right now. If you enable the, the top bar, please don't enable that on production. We don't promise like we are going to break a lot of things. So don't enable that. But we are shipping that. And the thing is that this will let us innovate way faster than we've been doing so far. This is experimental. But if you have an idea, please come. There is this meta issue. And you will be able to, um, to help giving us ideas. Some of the ideas that we have so far, and that's the goal that we're achieving. And this can change. But this is the top bar. So on the right, uh, this is the most controversial thing, is the safe at the top. We don't only have one form in one page in Drupal. We can have four. So we, it's, it's the thing that we will need to test. We will need to prove, uh, to, to test things, to, to try different ways of doing that. On an accessibility perspective, we sold that, but we do still don't know how to handle all the forms that are not on a entity yet. We will get there eventually. So you have the more actions, you have the preview there, you would have like uh, open and close the sidebar on the, on the right. On the, on the left you could see that you have the publish. Uh, if you want to, for example, install this autosave module, which is great, you would have the information on how long ago was, this, was this, uh, it actually installed or not, or just information that is useful. You have in there a go back. This is the go back thing that I was saying people were confused. So that's one of the initial designs. So we need to really think where this uh, item takes you to. This will be, for example, on the front end. On the front, I've uh, grayed out uh, the content area itself, but you don't have the tabs in here. So as a front end developer, I won't have to come up with an idea for the tabs to edit and view and everything that goes well with the uh, designs that whoever designed the front end side. So yeah, this is basically the idea for the top bar. Um, as I'm saying, please don't enable that on production. I don't promise that it will work and it won't break anything. So the priorities is getting to stable soon, like in the next months, uh, way before our summer or that's the idea. Let's see if we can do that. We also want to, uh, if somebody has experience with Nightwatch tests, we would love to have uh, all the tests uh, done on the front end for Nightwatch. And as I was saying, if I don't say that, Matteo is going to kill me, kill me uh, single directory components, hopefully soon. So this is the list of people that has helped getting into Drupal core. 
Uh, there's way more people helping now, but they were the ones, and Peñasquito, yes, you are here. I forgot giving credit to him. As I was saying, it was Friday midnight in Barcelona. It took, like, for me and Lauri, more than half an hour, almost one hour, to get the credits from everybody. And I missed Peñasquito. Sorry. So you are here. Sorry. <laughs> so if you want to get involved, um, now the issue queue that you should use, don't use the country module anymore. Uh, use uh, the um, component navigation dot module uh, in the yeah, in, in core. Uh, if you have any ideas of if you know of any module that uh, needs integration, ping us, uh, drop a message on Slack, or open an issue uh, on Drupal.org, and we will do our best, even provide designs if it's necessary. It's the same way as we are doing for environment indicator or other modules. So please uh, let us know if there's if you see if you know about something that should be integrated here. It's been really useful that people has done that so far, and we're taking into account all these ideas. The Slack channel is admin UI, and we're going to be at the admin UI table. So thank, oh, wait. Sasha's going to kill me. This is already shipped with Jean. Jean already ships with the navigation, so if you want to do that, you can actually already sh uh, change colors and everything. Mateo is going to kill me, Peñasquito is going to kill me, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> Done. No. Any question? How does it look in mobile? So it goes in. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> One second. No, I need to get there. You kind of lose the context of the parent. Because if you go to a menu that is that deep, it's complicated too because this right now it's not a phone. It's way um, higher than a real phone. So it will be complicated to uh, put so much stuff in there. That was my concern and actually people really liked it. Um, I personally don't like to lose the context, but tests so far look good, but we will keep testing that. Any other question? Okay, thank you everybody. I can start. Thank you for the question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I feel like I'm the guy who brought an iPad to Triple Nine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like curious. How is it going? Yeah?